the lie, let's hit the dance floor. Don't work too hard, my break a backbone. Return to the Mac, the king is back though. Corvette and cash, I never like those. She saw the stone, you know how that go. Fatality, my diamonds that cold. Versace trunks, I hit my backstroke. Knock on the door. She at the back, bro. All I really take is a little taste. I like girl blue eyes with a little bass. Here for the thrill, I don't need a chase, sir. Wanna vibe it to get away. Shimmy, shimmy, y'all got the semi four way. Don't step out the line like this, a probate. You hit the line and tried to locate. This for the time, got time for no day. One, too many, I'm going. Two, too crazy, and I got three. bad ones, and they ready. Four. A good time, so now it's in the whip, we left that. Six. Can't remember anything, but I know we got late, late. Really think I'm seeing things. Read the line in mid-between. Yellow light, I gotta speed up. Get home to a cold shower. Need that pronto. Look, look, look like a rave at the condo. Heck of a night in Toronto. She said, boy, you Morocco. Pearl White mentioned in the top go. Fill up my cup with the pop wall. High off life in the spot, though. Running at the visa. Really talking to a real life Mona Lisa. Jesus peace is hanging off the fleece. Hockey world and welcome back to the New Zealand Heritage Hockey Tournament 2024, the place where culture and pride hit the turf and some of the best players in the country have the chance to stand up and represent their heritage. We're coming to you live from the National Hockey Centre here in North Harbour, home of the North Harbour Hockey Association and home of the New Zealand Black Sticks. It's the third day of tournament here and it's always one that throws up surprises at Heritage Hockey with must-win games, upsets, penalty shootouts and everything in between on the agenda. I'm Brad Pittman and we'll be with you all Easter weekend bringing you the 16 games here for Heritage Hockey 2024. I'm joined in commentary by New Zealand Fiji coach and uh, all around good fella, Stu Pitu. Stu, welcome up to the booth. Cheers Brad, thanks for having me. We've got a, uh, we've got a exciting game on our hands here. It's the second game of the day between the New Zealand Asian men taking on New Zealand Junior Māori side in the men's section. Uh, and with a, a penalty shootout win on day one, it's all made things a little bit interesting in the men's section. The Asian team taking down your New Zealand Fiji boys in that shootout. Uh, the Māori boys, they've had two losses, so while they are going to be playing for the bronze tomorrow, they can really cause some implications for the later game if they can get up here this morning so um, huge one and huge one you'll be keeping a pretty keen eye on Stu with your Fiji boys playing later this afternoon. Yeah I will uh, try my best to be unbiased but uh, I'm definitely a supporter of the Māori team for this if they get uh, if they get up here um, that helps our team out uh, quite a bit uh, towards making the final. Yeah that's it so we were trying to solve the Da Vinci code and do all the maths just in the in the five minutes before coming in here um, we believe the case is if the Maldi team do win the game outright, it'll pretty much send your Fiji boys into the final tomorrow. Uh, any other results, then it does start to come down to maths and who beat who and, and some different implications. Obviously, your own fate is in your hands. If you guys just can win it outright this afternoon against a pretty tough Indian side, then you'll go to the final regardless. Uh, but it's good to be able to see what happens here first and then know what your pathway looks like. Yeah, it'll, it'll good to be uh, good to know where we sit before the game, but uh, you know, we're also planning to go out and actually uh, have a good game this afternoon either way. And um, 
yeah, no matter what happens, if we get a win this afternoon, as we will try and do, then uh, we'll secure ourselves a spot in the final. Yeah, yeah. So it's uh, exciting stuff for both the men's games here. As we see the two captains out in the middle, it's Dylan Muggleston and Norpeter Hawhepa, alongside our two umpires for the match, Dion Hawk and Jacob Camilleri in the pinks. Uh, so the uh, Asian side here in the white strip today, thank goodness, because their black strip uh, would have been a tough watch for us. Stu, they're in the white North Harbour kit there and the multi team of course in their traditional black singlets um, the teams will come out here just a couple of players to make note of um, in this New Zealand multi side he's probably gone under the radar coming in but Brayton Lemon uh, young striker out of Rutsudua who um, has really set his name up over the last couple of days scored a couple of uh, really good goals one in each game individual goals really um, showing off his skill set first time in the team uh, played for Waiariki in the National Māori Tournament last year and has really stepped up in his first outing with the junior Māori side. Um, there's some there's some experienced campaigners out there, the likes of Norpeta Hohepa, the captain, Keelan Stafford, who you know pretty well, Stu, Tymon Iverson, uh, Jordan Thomas. But, yeah, there's, some of these young guys are really stepping up this weekend, and it is a young side. Yeah, it's really cool to see the, the junior Māori guys coming through. There's a lot of depth in Māori hockey. Uh, in New Zealand now, which is cool to see. And uh, a lot of the young guys are really stepping up and uh, making a name for themselves out there in this tournament. Yeah, and then on, on the other side of things, of course, we can talk at length about the captain, Dylan Muggleston, and all of his exploits, not only this weekend, but at the same tournament two years ago. Um, same thing with John Casey, who's been fantastic in goal. It looks like he'll start on the bench this, uh, this morning, and Hayden Hartley will get the run for the Asian team. Uh, but some experience in guys like Lloyd McLaughlin, Quinton Smith, um, who we know of. But I also want to highlight uh, Ryan Shu, uh, a little striker who plays up the front for this Asian side. You know all too well, Shu. This Asian team, they've got some pace going forward. They keep running. They want to full press everything. They seem to not have a gas tank and just keep going. Uh, really exciting up the front. Yeah, yeah, they, they've definitely got no quit in them. Mm. Um, and it's, it's really cool to see um, how well organised and kind of composed they can be for a team that's, you know, playing their third game of hockey together ever before. I'm sure a lot of them were meeting each other on day one for the first time, but they're, they're actually a pretty organised bunch and there is some very good individual skill in there, so they're definitely not to be slept on. Yeah, and, and just the last little uh, point of interest to pick up here, looking at the coaches, uh, David Hayes v Sam Hewitt. <laughs> that's a, uh, a match-up for the ages. Uh, in the sidelines, of course, David Hayes with the junior Māori side and Sammy Hewitt stepping up and taking the Asian boys this weekend. Um, I'm sure there's going to be a, a little bit going on in the dugouts too. That uh, Yeah, I would, um, I would pay a fair few dollars to see them uh, both chuck their kid on and get out and play centre-half <laughs> against each other. That would be a, a mighty entertaining duel, but uh, what we do have today will be just as exciting. Yeah, I think if it was four-minute quarters, the boys would be into <laughs> yeah, it. Yeah, that'd be um, fine. I don't know about... Uh, full games for the boys out there in the middle, but uh, as we see the Asian side, they'll have first use of it through Lloyd McLaughlin. I've got to give a shout out to Lloyd. He was one of the real big drivers of this Asian uh, men's program, getting it together. Um, he's got to sort of come to the organisers and said, look, really want to do something in this space. There's enough of us out there. Um, and really cool to see their debut at this tournament. It's, here's the start, and there is uh, that speed of the Asian side. That one was Ryan Shu, who I was speaking about earlier. Keep an eye on him, number 10 up the front for the Asian side. Yeah, that just shows how quickly they can get into their work and get going forward. But this Māori junior team is very similar if they can get the ball up the field. Yeah, that's uh, a guy we didn't speak about in the build-up but have at length over the tournament, Caleb Williamson, um, young striker for the junior Māori side. He's only got one speed. He got uh, flat stick there on halfway, but uh, pretty impressive breakout. And well defended on the edge of the circle there. It's Tristan Walker on the ball. Look over cool to see. I think Natana down here uh, today. I saw him uh, out here watching the game. Natana, a long servant for New Zealand Māori Hockey, out there now watching his uh, his son take the uh, take charge for the junior team. Really cool moment for the young Rua Mata boy. And there's a little bit of uh, action in the middle of the field here for the Asian side. Bit of pressure now. Oh, it's a good pinch. 
Might have been just a little bit too eager on the whistle there was Jacob Camilleri. Dylan Muggleston made a really good pinch at the top of the circle and he wanted to go in and have a shot. But yep. the whistle did go, so he has to take his free hit. Yeah, and interestingly there, um, just of note, playing up a little bit higher up the field, Dylan Muggleston there, almost like a, in that instance, was in an attacking midfielder type of role. He'll come back to centre midfield now, but he was up hunting on the edge of the circle there and would have loved to have open shot at that one. Yeah, he's, he's got a bit of an engine on him, so he'll uh, he'll get around the park um, and he'll cover a lot of yards. He already has in the first two games, but expect to hear his name a lot today for the Asian men. Yeah, it's a good start here for the Asian side. They're, uh, again, like I said, putting full press on as much as they can, really trying to turn the ball over up the field. That's a great ball down to TJ Hudanui. Cleaned up by Quentin Smith. And here's Brayton Lemon. Here he is. Oh, just about went three for three there. Early doors, Brayton Lemon. He's got a quick action on him. He turned uh, that into a shot really quick there, Stu. Um, not a known player sort of before this tournament. Not a huge name coming in, but, man, he's looked good this weekend. Yeah, I, I can tell you for me, he was a completely unknown quantity before the weekend, but after he went 50 metres against us yesterday, yep. I now definitely know who he is. Yeah, absolutely. And like I said, very nearly did it again there in this first quarter for the junior Maldi side. What a tournament he's having. And, uh, Asian defense just getting cut up a little bit down the middle. Something they won't want to happen too much. Most teams are pretty happy to let the ball go down the sideline. But if you're giving up stuff down the middle, uh, there's normally some kind of something going wrong. Yeah, and it, it can be a real place for this junior multi side when the Hawhipper brothers can work together. So Norpeta and, and Tioranga there, when they can get going up the middle of the field, they are hard to stop. Um, there's a certain instinct when you're playing with your brother, uh, just being able to know where each other are on the field. Uh, so yeah, perhaps troubling first signs for the Asian team down the middle of the field. Uh, but look, plenty of go down the middle. Here it is, Tioranga Hohepa read that one really well. <laughs> uh, an unfortunate there, uh, Tioranga Hohepa. He's had his card upgraded to a yellow, I think, for throwing the stick as he went in there. Um, it's pretty heads up play from Quinn Smith, just shielding the ball. Uh, keeping it on the edge of his stick and, and inviting or enticing the uh, the stick challenge. and uh, So they'll be without a player for at least five minutes here. Stu, and could be a real opportunity for this Asian side to strike first. Yeah, normally the uh, free upgrade is a good thing, uh, <laughs> yeah. but not when it comes to uh, cards in the game of hockey. Well, so That's it, I've got a McDonald's VIP sticker <laughs> that gets me free upgrades, and they don't look like that. No. Uh, here come the Asian side, up this right T-spot area. Another free hit here, stationary play. It's uh, going to fall for them here. Shot opportunity, but it's on the foot of Harrison Cochran. Great skill there, yeah, Daniel Easton. Just putting it on the foot of the defender. And uh, I'd be a little disappointed from the, the junior Maldi defence there. It was a stationary free hit on that side of the field that nobody really cleaned up. And this work from Easton... There, we'll earn them a penalty corner, and uh, we haven't quite seen it at full force yet, Stu, but Dill Muggleston's got a rocket in him. Yeah, he only needs one to get going, so we'll see if they're going to go to him. They went the German variant there. Uh, interesting first up. A late switch into a German and couldn't quite get it away. Um, interesting tactic for the first one. Stu, uh, yeah, I'd say that's uh, a, a bit of coaching coming through. There's definitely something they've had a look at from the uh, Maldives PC defence, and they've decided that there's a bit of a weakness on some movement at the top. So they've given a German. And I do believe the first runner got to it. So yeah, it's interesting. Usually, you know, when you talk about first corners being so, um, as we just see a bit of attack here, so prescribed like that, it is usually a coaching thing. It is usually something they've talked about. Opting for the German up first. Maybe they think that Dylan Muggleston is 
you know, a, a highlighted threat and that the runners would run uh, to him. So just trying to play that German off. But yeah, first runner still in amongst it and well defended in the end by the Maldi side. Yeah, good first running. Dylan Markston is a bit of a, a you know, a, a target man when it comes to penalty corner. So if you're going to use him as a decoy, you'll normally attract a lot of attention. Yep. But they did well there. Another ball straight down the middle, but no one on the end of it. Yeah, it's an interesting conversation we had in the earlier game I had with, with Uri were just about strikers at distance like that, often getting a little bit too flat across the field and not creating layers up up the middle of the field for that sort of ball to be picked up. So we have a little bit of a turnover opportunity here. Daniel Easton taking it quickly. And cleaned up there by Ben Cooper. A little bit of back and forth both ways. Well, Messi there for both teams, and now a chance to reset for the Asian team. Yeah, this this multi team won't mind it being messy while they're down to ten men. Yeah. The, the more messy and start stop they can make the game, the more time they have to get their full complement back on the field. They're going to have to do some defending, but they're doing well so far. Yeah, and it looks like uh, I didn't mention it earlier, but. Uh, Miles Landon back with the start again uh, for the third time in a row for this New Zealand multi team. Played the full game yesterday. Uh, of course, they've got Solomon Kai here, who's a pretty handy uh, goalkeeper on the bench at the moment. No better calm as ever, cleans up. He's captaining the side, of course, this weekend and showing his worth there in the defensive circle. It's a bit of space on the left-hand side here for the Māori boys. If they can keep this in play, but the pass just goes a little bit behind. Yeah, just not um, decisive enough, I think, on that midfielder there to throw the ball to Jordy Thomas. He's a, a gun if they can get it to him up the front with the white headband on. Yeah. Um, the, head, the headband adds 10% uh, extra stats or so, I've been told by Jan Peterson. Yeah, yeah, I, I've, I've heard that as well, and it's... Uh, yeah, we saw him without it yesterday for moments, which uh, I'm sure he'll never live to forget. But uh, here come the multi team again, straight up the middle. But defended well enough that time. And again, remember they are an extra player at this Asian side. The multi team down to 10, probably for another two or so minutes by my uh, guesstimations. Miles Landon being called on to get in the mix as a defender out on the baseline does well, but the Asian team still have possession. Yeah, and you'll, you'll uh, have seen a fair bit of Miles, of course, down in, in the Hamilton area over the last few years and his development there. He's really coming on as a young goalkeeper. Yeah, yeah, he played uh, he played a year or two for us, uh, for the Collegians boys in Hamilton. Mm -hmm. um, really good dude, and he's improved a, a whole lot over the years um, into a quite an accomplished goalkeeper. Yeah, absolutely. Zip. Been having a pretty good weekend as well here. So perhaps see can be called on again. But not this time. Long corner coming for the Asian side. In fact, no, it'd be sideline right in the corner for the Maldi boys. Lloyd trying to get his team up in a full press. Yeah, they'll definitely want to press this. They've still got a man advantage for a few minutes. Keelan throws something down the field. It's going to be picked up. Chance for a counter-attack if they can move the ball quickly. Yeah, big one here. Numbers were up. It's a poor, poor option. Um, often we talk about players just getting inside that one cone towards the goal and no real width options there for them. He's back now. They're back to full complement here. The multi team, can they do it straight away? Cooper. Yes, oh, sir. Okay, he's at. What a goal. Tildunga Hoheb had been on for about three seconds, had one touch of the ball, opened up Ben Cooper, and what a finish. That's a rocket there for the junior Maldi side. Stu, you can stop celebrating, but that's a goal to Look, the Maldi it's, boys. It's, it's just an exceptional finish from Ben Cooper there, yep. Hamilton Boys High School representing. Um, I think the Asian team might have even been undone a little bit by the card subbing in, and they didn't yep. have anyone to cover him, so... Um, that ended up paying dividends for the Māori guys. Yeah. And now they're back to a full complement with a one-goal lead. It's a strange one, isn't it? When, when you've got your defence organised and you're all good, and then all of a sudden some random guy comes running on from the, the bench that you had no intention of defending. Um, like you say, got them undone a little bit there. 
Uh, but a welcome injection and uh, now the lead for the junior multi side midway through this first quarter. Yeah, and this is something that this junior multi team in particular um, have the capability of doing. They can turn goals from absolutely nothing and uh, they're very, very fast going forward and they want to be and dangerous in the circle. So the Asian team have the ability to do that as well. They're a little bit more likely to build play and try and construct things. Um, and the Maldives will construct as well when they can, but their big threat is just the flair and going forward at pace. Yeah, that's it. And there's a number of guys up there that, like you say, can just create from loose ball. Caleb Williamson, Brayton Lemon we've talked about, TJ Hudanui, uh, but yeah, Ben Cooper doing it that time. Uh, and another one of those products coming out of the Waikato area, uh, putting on for the Maldi team today. That one, a little left to be desired. Just splitting the difference for the two defenders there. Yeah, he split the gap perfectly. <laughs> yeah. Unfortunately, it was the gap between his two players and the ball is over the sideline. That's, a, that's an absolute beauty of a ball <laughs> if that's between two strikers. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, position now at halfway for the Asian men. And the, uh, the ladies let us know that they are calling themselves the, uh, the Asian Dragons, with it being Year of the Dragon. Currently, they're going to follow the Zodiac uh, signs, which is really cool. Um, I've heard this might be the Asian wontons, but we'll uh, confirm that a little bit later. Here's Caleb Williamson. Great pass. Brayton Lemon. Oh, that's oh, pretty. Excellent counter-attacking hockey. Could not be more textbook. 3v2. Pass the ball to the open guy. Find that empty striker on the back post and an easy tap in. And look, with, with no disrespect whatsoever, those are three guys who would generally just take it on <laughs> one on three and yep. probably score it anyway. <laughs> but man, to see the maturity in those three to make those two extra passes and 100% ensure the goal, that's really special. And that's got to be pleasing for someone like um, Coach Dave, who, you know, again, is probably the player who wants to take on three guys and score the goal anyway. But... That's really good hockey. That's the sort of stuff that coaches uh, dream of. Yeah, they almost had another chance here. They're, there's a clear tactic for them to sit at a bit of half court, wait for a turnover, and then launch their, their dangerous strike line with some space. Oh, long overhead, Ken Stafford struggled to bring down cleanly, so now the Asians will have a yeah, dig. It's got a little bit big on him there, the bounce. Stafford and does enough though to calm things down at least for a second. McLaughlin. Oh, it's beaten them all. <laughs> That's unfortunate for the Asian team. It was really good skill from Lloyd McLaughlin just showing some 3D, but beats everybody except the leg. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to seeing that replay again at halftime from that second goal because that's, um, that's the sort of stuff you clip and, and show at coaching sessions. Just the ability to create the two-on-one and execute it to a T. Uh, yeah, really impressive. Yeah, and they, they all count the same on the scoreboard, don't they? You can beat five guys and put a top corner, um, but it still counts as uh, one on the goal sheet. And just the same as, you know, winning your 3v2s, passing the ball, getting a touch on the back post. Counts the same on the score sheet, so they're all valuable. Yeah, here is the goal. We'll just have a look at it here. Caleb Williamson, little draw and pass. You see the shape of the stick. Subtleties, but huge in the end. And that pass, wide enough the goalie couldn't do anything with it. Hudanui in the perfect spot. Low, stick on the ground, made sure of it. Um, Stu, I mentioned the subtlety of, of Caleb Williamson's stick while he's carrying the ball. Just enough of a wrist show that he might go himself then closed it for the pass. Yeah, combined with some good vision as well. Once you get your head up, that, that forces the defender to, to hold their ground a little bit. They can't zero in and turn it into a 1v1. So that vision combined with that kind of open stick when they're carrying the ball just holds the defenders up. Really good subtlety in the skills. And again, here's an opportunity if they can make the numbers work. If they can do it quickly here at the Maldi side. Charging forward. And that one's Tyler Kennedy. Good spot tackle on yep. the edge of the circle. Yeah, really solid work there. Had to be done to it. I think it's uh, Tane Newman out there. And here's Hohepa bringing it down under a bit of pressure from two Asian players. It's 
The Ruamata trio there at the moment. Hohepa, Hawk and Waka. Yeah, they've, they've played a lot of hockey together, as you were saying before. They, yep. they kind of know how to read each other's space, a little bit of a sixth sense of where the guys are going to be. And they actually control that core middle of the field really well for this junior side. Yeah, and the cool thing too is they play in those same three positions for their club side. You know, Bubby plays in the middle and then Tristan at the back, Parnapa usually out as a wing half. So, you know, really good knowledge of where they are on the field. And big first quarter for the junior Māori side, Stu. It's our second game of the day. Second goal we saw there was an absolute beauty and they're up 2-0 over the Asian team. Yeah, again, I'll, I'll be honest, I'm pretty happy to see the Māori boys up 2-0 at uh, quarter time. But I know this Asian team has got a lot of fight in them. They they won't go out, uh, you know, they won't go down without a fight. And they'll definitely want to be playing some better hockey and they're definitely capable of it. So look for them to bounce back a bit in the second quarter. Yeah, and if, if there's one, uh, you know, one part of the game where I see could potentially be an issue for this junior Māori side is when the legs get heavy come the back end of the game. We saw in that game against uh, your side, the Asian team just stayed in it, stayed in it, kept fighting. Um, and look, if they can wear them down, there could be an opportunity late in quarters or late in the game for this Asian side just to, to turn the table a little bit. Um, you know, as impressive as this first quarter was for the junior Māori side, it's certainly not done. Uh, as we see some of the highlights from that first quarter, that's the first goal there to Ben Cooper. Interestingly, we did see that German from the top angle and it was the second runner that got out uh, in some really good spaces. There's the second goal. Williamson, Lemon, Hurunui. And there's the Asian team there. Coach Sam Hewitt uh, getting through what they're trying to uh, achieve. Awesome to see Tioranga there um, leading a lot of the conversation in the junior Māori huddle. Um, you know, we mentioned he's probably got a bit of a, a debt to pay to the team after uh, sitting on the sideline for five minutes in that first quarter. Uh, he'll want to go out and make sure that they get over the line here in this game. We see uh, here a big applause from the uh, the crowd. We didn't quite see what it was for. Um, but awesome to have the support. And it's been good all, all weekend, Stu. It's been a beautiful weekend down here in, in North Harbour. Um, good to see some of the fans getting out. Yeah, the sun is shining. It's a great venue to be playing some hockey. And we've been treated to a, a pretty good first quarter from the junior Māori side. Here we go, though. Muggleston. Oh, what a save. And Geordie Thomas, the woodchopper, gets rid of it. What a start from the Asian side. Sort of like they did in that first quarter. Uh, just went all for it. Uh, the overhead there pulled down. Dylan Muggleston went 3D off a free hit and uh, called the, the glove save from Miles Landon. Yeah, big Lando, easy as you like. <laughs> the uh, Asian team have enjoyed a bit of possession in the uh, attacking 25, though. They've got a couple of chances. They had that penalty corner you mentioned and mm. a, a shot or two on goal. Miles Landon has had to make a couple of saves. So they will get their chances, and if they can turn some of that possession in the attacking 25 into pressure, into controlled circle entries, they do have the weapons to put these in the goal. Yeah, and I think that's it. It's just their uh, entry at the moment. Uh, as we send a special shout-out to Kai Elliott, who will probably be doing nothing in the later game. Um, let see the Asian team breaking forward here again. Uh, no, you're right. They've had this position, and it's all sort of been around the edge of the circle. They just haven't quite had the genuine stuff inside the circle yet. Um, the passes go in, or the ball bounces in there for them, and they can't be the first ones to it in clean position. I'd like to see them tidy that up a little bit, this Asian side, if that'll uh, you know, mount a bit of a comeback here. I don't think you're wishing for that, Stu, but uh, as a spectator, I am. <laughs> oh, yeah, as a spectator, I wouldn't mind them uh, pegging one or two back to uh, make it a bit of a game. Um, and as you mentioned, the position around the circle and the attacking 25, it is one of the hardest places to play your hockey. It gets yep. congested, it's tough. Um, that's generally why I situate myself at the back end, <laughs> have to not worry about that stuff, but... Yeah, no, and I retired, so uh, I've given up trying, trying it as well. Um, 
No, it, it is tough when teams are able to set a defence, get a free man in spots, um, do their work outside the circle, give away the free hits that aren't so dangerous. It is hard to break down. So, uh, as we see now, the multi side. It's a little dangerous, the call there. I don't know if danger's what I'd call it, but uh, out they come, the Asian side through Quentin Smith. Speck. Oh, Ryan Shu just couldn't bring it under control. What a ball from Quinn Smith, though. That's on halfway. That is a peach of a delivery straight to the striker's forehand and just his first touch let him down. But again, you can see they will be able to turn some attacking opportunities. They just have to get better at their finishing. Yeah, and again, I think that that just speaks to what we're talking about, how much easier it is to attack when there's space up there yep. rather than having to, to plug away in this sort of a setup. But Jordy Thomas, he doesn't need much space. Well defended by Dill Muggleston. I'll give uh, Jordan Thomas credit for not pulling the trigger there. Yep. I thought for all days that he was going to absolutely boom that one, but he patiently didn't let rip. Yeah, and I think uh, if I had a sixth sense in future telling, I think if he did, he was doing a Dan Scanlon and was about to hit Dill Muggleston's stick into the car park. Yeah, I think there's a divot <laughs> in the turf <laughs> over there. It's gonna one of the uh, one of the junior Māori ladies found it this morning, unfortunately. Uh, Dan Scanlon's still got his name on the pitch. Yeah. That one's picked ha up there by Dill Muggleston. Harley might have to get the, the glue gun out and <laughs> patch it up a bit later. Yeah, that's it. That's it. And the ball's just going to uh, roll down the corner. Ryan Shoes off on his bike to go and get it. And a bit of an opportunity for both teams to catch their breath. An opportunity for me to thank... Of course, our fantastic sponsors of this weekend's tournament, MTEL Intelligent Solutions, Keeper Life, Insurance and Risk Management, Go Hockey at gohockey.co.nz, and of course, the major sponsors of not only the tournament, um, but the broadcast, and also some of the teams as well. One Foundation, uh, we couldn't do it without your support over all four years of New Zealand Heritage Hockey. This one, no exception. Uh, so massive shout out and thanks to One Foundation and all their support bringing you this tournament, but also bringing you all the games live and free. Uh, thanks to the team at Local Gecko Productions and the support from One Foundation. Excellent bit of skill there from Ryan Shu. Couple little in and away drags, got it around onto the back foot and got a shot away. Really impressive in close quarters, the ball up off the stick, bringing the PC. We'll have a look at this on the replay, Stu. Yeah, it, it might be an odd comparison, but uh, some of the older viewers out there, Ryan Shu reminds me of uh, one Stacey Jones, the uh, <laughs> league player. He's a little bit of a little general, a little bit shifty, and can just create stuff. Got a little bit of magic in his back pocket, and he'll whip it out and sprinkle that fairy dust when he needs to. Yeah, and that was special there. Like I said, it didn't look like he had a lot of space, and all of a sudden he created room for three drags and a shot. Uh, so good skill shown there by Shu. And now the Asian team. Oh. No decoy, no deception, no chance there for the multi team. It's still Muggleston doing what he does best. Look at him. Yeah, let's he, not be fancy. Let's flick it bottom left nice and hard, and let's beat the keeper for speed. Yeah, and they call him the Red Dragon. Here he is. Well, um, you'll see it on its way out because you didn't see it on its way in there. Dill Muggleston gets some heater on that one. And uh, just like that, we're back to 2-1. The difference halved. And uh, this Asian side, I'm sure, with a bit of confidence now that they can break this multi-team down. Oh. If he could have swallowed his whistle for a uh, second there, I was they had a 3v1. <laughs> I think we both came in about to yell down the microphones there, just let him play. Yeah. There was three Asian yeah. strikers on their bikes. Oh, the, the call was correct, but, you know, every now and then it's, it's got to be let the boys play, <laughs> yeah. let the boys play. Yeah, that could have been real <laughs> excitement times there for the Asian side. You imagine they'd gone 1-2 in a matter of moments. Wow. Uh, there's the confidence that I think they were just looking for off the back of that first goal. Stafford looking solid. Still working there. And uh, 
perhaps unbelievably, but one of the oldest players in the team this weekend, uh, Keelan Stafford, outside of Tymon Iverson, who joined the side late in the piece. I'm pretty sure he's the uh, the veteran. Yeah, it's it's cool to see Keelan in a bit of a leadership role here. Obviously, you know, not not really an old guy at all, but when you're <laughs> playing for a junior team, someone's got to step up, and uh, he's he's taken on a leadership role, running things at the back for the Maldives, and it's cool to see him in that position. Yeah, and it, uh, just saw that delivery from Tioranga Horhepa, upright hit. You don't see the skill too often, especially from these younger players, just being able to put it on a dime there. Uh, couldn't pick out a striker, but showing off all his skill set and his brother, Norpeta, showing his skills. Brayton Lemon, we've already seen him this weekend. Like the composure, Geordie Thomas just gets away on him. And now away come the Asian side, inside pool. And they well defended in the end by Tristan Walker. I just noticed off the ball though, Stu, Quinton Smith had come up to join the attack. There was only one striker up in the circle. Uh, he was standing right with the defender. So not a lot of targets there for the Asian side when they bring the ball up into that attacking third. Yeah, the legs are perhaps getting a little bit heavy on uh, day three here. They've played two pretty tough games already, and uh, they'll be feeling it up front. But they just need to dig deep. Sam Hewitt will be giving them the go juice in the, uh, on the bench, and he'll keep them running. Yeah, that's it. I think he'll probably just have a video of himself that he rolls and says, uh, don't do this. <laughs> <laughs> keep running. <laughs> keep it moving. Uh, here's Ryan Shu. He's got all the moves. Here's Muggleston showing off some 3D and oh, away. Get through three of them. Yep. He's going to get his eyes up, flinging it oh, almost across goal. Really, really good cover there by Tioranga Jorge, but had to be done because, yeah, you're right. Dill had his eyes up. He was looking. That could have been real dangerous for the Maldi defence. That's the second time now that I've seen Quinton Smith throw that, that searcher through there on that 45 angle. It's got all the way through um, to A for the Asian side. Man, you've got to be better at, at giving him that target. But B for the multi team, you've got to be aware of that uh, entry there because it's flat. It's uh, in really good areas. Probably a little fortunate there. I think it's tied up both his shoelaces on its way through that one. The... Uh, I've never seen the foot door trap door, but they'll keep position up here now at the multi side, just inside the 25 yard line. Thomas fakes reverse, goes forehand, uh, well it's, defended. It's not twice in one day that he's going to pull out of taking a shot. Yep. Oh, there's space up front for Lloyd if we could throw this ball. Oh, I like one this, more, two on one. One more. Here it is on the post. Oh, oh. what a. What an effort there. Getting all the way back. I'm pretty sure it's Keelan Stafford Keelan there. Keelan Stafford got yep. in the way in the end, and he needed to because it was goal time if he was not there. Yeah, that's going to look really nice on the replay. Hopefully we'll see that at half time. Asian team still with attacking possession. This is a situation they want to get better results from. Can they get a good circle entry under control? Can they perhaps turn it into a penalty corner? Yeah, I think that could be the real key for them. This Asian side, perhaps if they can't break through this wall here, is just find a way to get a corner. Uh, whether it's through repeat offences, here's the replay of it. This is a nice ball. I thought they'd maybe butchered it, but it's a great pass. It's Keelan Stafford with two efforts there. Firstly, to stop it going across to the postie, but then staying in it on well, two knees and an elbow <laughs> to deflect it up over the back line. Really good. Good effort. Yeah, putting his body on the line, King Stafford. And now his team has another chance. Oh, pass possibly a second late there. Yep, yep. I think the defender wised up to it that time from Caleb Williamson. And now Hudanui, 3D. Oh, the wood chopper comes out top yep. of the circle. And that's a PC every day of the week. Yeah, really good work there by TJ Hudanui just to get the ball off the deck, make it difficult for the retreating defenders. We'll have a look at the replay of this build-up. 
Here it is. Just kept it off the ground, and that. Yeah, I think it was uh, Robbie Williams. Yeah, he's, there. Given, he's given the defender a wry smile. They know what's going <laughs> on. All right. So, penalty corner time here, and uh, Harrison Cochrane has gone down to pull the ball out. Out to five. Rizzi gang. And uh, it wasn't a convincing Rizzi gang. Only got a third of it there. Uh, so those of you perhaps unfamiliar with the tactic, if the ball comes outside the dotted circle, so five yards outside the circle, the penalty corner's finished and it's now uh, pretty much free play. So the ball doesn't have to hit the backboard on a, a shot anymore. Uh, and what I guess they were trying to do was come out, back in, and then just spray one. <laughs> and uh, unfortunately, Bubby didn't get much of it. Um, but yeah, a little bit of a tactic. We've, we've seen it at times from numerous teams. Is, uh, you know, if they've got someone with a reverse rocket. Speaking of reverse rocket, Ben Cooper scored his first one. Now get another go at it from the penalty corner. Just up off the boots there of Hayden Hartley in goal. Yeah, maybe they need to call on Ben Cooper to hit this one on the back end if they go for the same option. Cool to see a team being a bit creative at penalty corner time, particularly if your straight shots aren't working for you. Yeah, it was uh, penalty corner here. Yeah, interesting. It's a team that have a fair few guys that can really rip a reverse. Not to say Bubby doesn't, but guys like Geordie Thomas, Ben Cooper, who already has in this game. Even Tymon Iverson likes a, a fair dig at it. Um, but yeah, it's cool to see something a bit different. This time trapped. Oh, <laughs> well, we'll, oh we'll, no. We'll call that another variation. That. Um, <laughs> I think it was a bit of a, uh, we'll, we'll mix it up a little bit at the top and then figure it out. But very good uh, stop on the line there. Yeah, that corner is what we'd call rocks and diamonds. Uh, diamond trap, rock of a trying to pick that up. Diamond that he got a shot away, a good shot on the reverse, and absolutely great save by um, Quinton Smith on the line. But then the goalkeeper just dragged it back onto his foot. <laughs> Here we go. They go first bracket again. Uh, that one's uh, a little bit soft there. Yeah, easily saved in the end. Pretty regulation save, kicking it nice and clear. Yeah, and I think the uh, inject was just a little bit off the line too. Trap had the shift to the right. I don't think that was... Uh, the idea and then you couldn't really pick all of it up the flicker there uh, yeah it's it's been a little bit tough uh, across all the games and all the teams um, on the men's side of the draw the the penalty corner attacking um, brackets just you know teams don't have a lot of uh, build up and training chances yeah. and getting you know getting a good clean drag trap flick or whatever you're executing um, a lot of the teams have had a little bit of struggle in that area Yeah, we only have to look at the last game where I think the Asian ladies had oh, probably north of 10 penalty corners um, and only scored one of them. You know, they, they could have upset the junior multi team very easily had that conversion rate been even up at a quarter. Um, but yeah, it is a difficult skill. It's, uh, you know, it looks easy when it goes r well and it goes right, but teams and players spend a lot of time perfecting the the short corner and there's just not that sort of time when you come together yeah. the morning of a tournament. Yeah, it's, it's the training time and putting all the pieces together. The skills are definitely there, but you've got to put it as a few pieces of skill. You've got to get a good inject, good trap, good Williamson. Slick. Oh, and that's more than good. That's absolutely beautiful. Caleb Williamson, and he loves it too. Uh, he, he might be getting the call up for the Black Sox after this one because oh. he has baseballed this. Yep. It didn't get any higher or lower. That's when you know it's been hit. This little 3D, look at that reverse touch. Bang. Thanks for coming. You think Dylan Muggleston gets him going quick? Good luck with that. Caleb Williamson. Well, he's been known for his time on the uh, naughty chair over the last couple of years at Heritage. I think he's just rewritten his, uh, his reputation there. Caleb Williamson, what an absolute banger of a goal and what a time to score right before half time there, Stu. Um, ripper of a goal. Yeah, great timing. And that'll give them a uh, 
not comfortable, but a, a bit of a buffer going in 3-1 to the half. Yeah, yeah, huge goal there. Well executed. Um, awesome to see. He's tried his absolute heart out through all three of the games. Um, there's been probably nobody on the park that works as hard as, as Caleb Williamson, regardless of the score, regardless of the time on the clock. Um, he'll run past the clock if there was an option for it. And, uh, yeah, really good um, that he's got that one in the bank. See the crowd there. We're going to go off to a quick ad break. We'll be back with some of the first half highlights after this. Welcome back here to halftime between the New Zealand Junior Māori team and New Zealand Asian men. It's our first men's matchup for day three here at Heritage Hockey 2024. And as you could have seen on the scoreboard there, the Māori boys up 3-1 over the Asian team. And Stu will have a look at some of these highlights here from the first half. This one here from Braithen Lemon very nearly broke the ice for the Māori team. Both teams have had some opportunities. A couple of penalty corners here for the Asian side. This one. Yeah, some good first running there from Keelan Stafford again. And Ben Cooper laying some wood. Yeah, looking good. Looking hot too. You love that. Ben Cooper finishes. This one, a beautiful goal. Coach's dream. Show, one pass. Cross the goal. Yeah, and easy as you like. Yeah, straight off the training pitch into the match. Excellent to see. Another thing that will please your coaching staff is just ripping it. Gripping it, ripping it, and heading back to half with a goal in your bag. This one very nearly, if it wasn't for Stafford making repeat efforts, I'd say Miles Landon was probably dead in, in the water there. Uh, speaking of Stafford, he's had his hands on a few things here, including this set up for what might be one of the goals of the tournament there from the young Māori striker Caleb Williamson. Speaking of not young, there's Harley Cooper out there warming up the goalkeepers. Uh, probably the only thing he's half good at on a hockey turf is uh, flicking the lacrosse stick. Looks like he's warming up Solomon Kai here. There, and we get a little bit of insight into the New Zealand Māori dugout. A few more smiles than they were yesterday, Stu, from what I understand. Uh, there were some choice words in their dugout yesterday. Uh, you would have been pretty close to some of that action. Yeah, it was a, it was a, look, I'd, I'd call it a classic PI Maldi's uh, <laughs> uh, fight. That one, you know, you've got two teams where guys are not going to get out of the way, and uh, when you've got um, some big boys running at each other, sometimes get some collisions. Yeah, that's it. That's it. It's it's the typical uh, shoulder to shoulder, elbow to elbow sort of stuff that we see from uh, a New Zealand Maldi versus any sort of Pacific Island team, NZ Fiji. Uh, often when we see them play Samoa or Tonga or any of those sort of teams, it's exactly the same, and that's why we uh, why we love watching it. You see the teams come back out here onto the park. Uh, what a facility, what a day, what an Easter weekend here. It has been at North Harbour. And there's our man Ryan Shue. Socks low, spirits high, they say. Height not high. <laughs> built low to the ground, built for speed, they say. And uh, can he be uh, a little bit of a thorn in the Māori team this half? 
crowd. Oh, they're trying to keep uh, Sun smart by the looks of that. Up in the shade. Probably a good idea. And we're back underway here with the Māori team. There's Jordy Thomas and Tristan Waka at the back. Yeah, it will be interesting to see the tactics from both teams. The uh, Asian men, obviously, as they go forward almost through Lloyd McLaughlin, they'll need to uh, step on the gas at some stage, look for them to full press, look for them to perhaps roll the dice a couple of times going forward. And then what will the junior Māori team do? Will they try and protect a two-goal lead or will they try and get a, you know, a third and a fourth to extend? Yeah, and for those that have been looking at points tables or, or mildly understanding what's going on, um, this Asian team have to win here. If, if they don't win this game, they're, pretty, well, they're, they're ruled out of tomorrow's final. Um, even a shootout win won't be enough for them here. So, um, you know, whether it starts now with 35 to go or, or we wait to see it a little bit later in the game, they have to go. And there's no second chances for them. Uh, if they win this one, they've got a shot. If not, they're playing for third and fourth tomorrow. Uh, so, you know, yeah. it could be a, an exciting half an hour here for the Asian team. He's clipped the top of the hockey ball there, and hence we haven't seen a whistle, but it was very, very close. Yep, I love the uh, efforts there of Braith and Lemon just to stay in it. Man, you're brave to be up in that uh, area, but you're right. I think it, it was a millimetre of contact, and contact's enough to say he hit it, and uh, that's why you know, I know a lot of people would have been saying, hey, it's a free hit. He swung at it and missed, but no, anything that's not a miss isn't a miss, so... And I think you can see the intent here of this Māori junior team straight away. They were up full pressing, and now they're looking to go forward quickly. So they're not going to stop with the two-goal lead. They're going to want more. No, absolutely. And for anybody that... Uh, oh, that's beautiful one-handed stick skill there. I think the penalty corner coming from just kicking it away. Perhaps intentional was the call outside the circle. Uh, but you're right, Stu. For anybody that knows Dave Hayes, is what's better than winning by two is winning by three. Uh, you see some of the skill here. Looks like Ben Schwass. This is one hand, right hand. I don't think I've seen this in quite some time. Just kind of coasted through, found a foot, and one, himself a penalty corner. Yeah. The last person I've seen that's with the ability to play like that is Simon Child. One hand at the end of the stick, the wrong hand, in and away like that. That's, yeah, that's tidy. Here's the corner. Muggleston. Great save there. And it is Solomon Kaihe in goal now. Oh, he's seen it like an absolute beach ball and just yep. swatted it. Yeah, again, we haven't seen, uh, obviously didn't make the field yesterday for the junior multi side, Solomon, but good to have him out here as part of the New Zealand Fives team that went over to the World Cup in Oman. He would have gained a lot from his experiences over there and uh, looking good and up to the first one here this afternoon. Oh, he's worn that on the uh, shoulder for his troubles. Off a deflection. Yeah, it's uh, Solomon hiring a plank there, I believe, in the midfield for the multi team, just taking it on the chest and off he goes. He's tough though, he's from Northland, so they build them tough up there. Mate, that's that's nothing but a bee sting to him. Yeah, yeah. They say the Cody tree, it bends but it doesn't break. And now. Tioranga turning players inside out. Oh, great ball across field as well. They've got a chance. It's the Hohepa connection. Here comes Norpeta. Reverse stick shot. Oh, three here's whiskers, and that was in, I think. That's got to be real close across the post there. There were players over there as well. Looked like maybe Braith and Lemon and potentially Tukuhu Palmer. Yeah, and I think they both had their sticks dead flat on the ground. I have no idea how that's not gone in the goal, but it must have skipped over. Yeah, I'd love to see the replay on that one. We might get it at the next break, potentially. But, uh, yeah, Tioranga linking up with his brother Norpeta, who delivered an absolute peach across the goal. Here he is again now, Norpeta. Tikohu Palmer. It's been tripped, Ooh. and 40 goes. Uh, for those unfamiliar, comes from pretty good uh, lineage. 
is uh, mum, Pare Rangitauera, sister of Tenga Rangitauera. Those two have been absolute stalwarts down in the Wairiki region for a number, a number of years. And uh, yeah, it's Kohu out there now. Of course, his brother, I think, was listed to play this weekend, but unable to um, take the field, Tomaho. Uh, but Te Kohu out there at the moment. And in it goes. Oh, what a ball. Williamson wants another. <laughs> that one just got big on him in the end there. It looks like John Casey has come onto the field, so double switch of the goalkeeper. Both teams... Rolling them through at half time. And John Casey, who we've heard over the weekend, nicknamed the Great Wall of China. And living up to his name through this weekend. And uh, you'll see this is uh, this is that replay there. It was Braith and Lemon. I'm not sure how that's gone through. Uh, it must have gone straight through <laughs> the middle of his stick yep. because he's right there in the perfect spot just somehow, unluckily, didn't get a connection on it. Yeah. Oh, good enterprising play. Yeah, Harry Harry Cochran uh, showing his skill there. Great turn. Ben Cooper, that's excellent. The idea was a million bucks. If we'd if he'd got it to Tyler Kennedy, it was all on, but just cut out. And now brought forward by Hohepa. Here's TJ Hurunui. Back to Hohepa. And now they find Tyler Kennedy. And it's straight out oh. onto their own foot. That's <laughs> unfortunate. You hate to see that as a defender, Stu. There's nothing worse. And you finally get it under control. You go to clear it. You rip it into your own teammate's foot. Yeah, I've I've been on the uh, giving and the receiving end of that one a number of times. You get the ball, you just want to get it out over the sideline, and you pump it straight into your teammate's foot. It's yep. a, um, yeah, it's a hang your head, go put your PCD gear on, and uh, yeah, try and, next time. And it's a shameless Sally as a striker to pump in the fist in the air. Yeah, boys. Yeah. Uh, none done, of us. You've done nothing to create that. You yeah. don't deserve this. But go right. and give him a pat on the head and. Uh, we're all smiles here. Geordie Thomas is going to pull one out for this Māori team. Can they push it out to a three-goal lead? Cooper. Yes, they can. Oh, Ben Cooper with the double goes ben. across goal. Yeah, opens up, flicks it to the right side as you're facing it for the attacker. And, yeah, what a finish there from Ben Cooper. Yeah, and just hit that gap between the postie and the goalkeeper. Uh, it's always a bit of a difficult one there as a goalkeeper. Some like to set up already programmed to that right side and just leave the runners to kind of take care of that channel. Obviously a little bit open that time and uh, tough for John Casey to get back across to. Yeah, it's a bit of a trend, the goalkeepers offsetting. They want to give themselves as much as they can to save the stuff on their stick side and they trust their runners. Mm. And then that's what can happen every now and then. If the ball can get in that gap between the keeper and the postman, it's a bit of no man's land, and then they can end up in the goal. Yep, yep, and uh, good execution there from Ben Cooper. As you mentioned, he's doubled up now, two goals in the game for Ben. And uh, there's a whole bunch of players, I think, now trying to hunt down Heron Marnie at the top of the goal scorers list. Uh, from when I last checked, I'm pretty sure Heron was sitting on four goals for the weekend. Um, we'll try and get that confirmed. There'll be a couple of players out here now that are adding to it. I believe Brayton Lemon's probably got his third. Yeah, so heading into it, her and Marnie was sitting on four. Brayton Lemon will now go to three. Uh, Rocco Ludolf, Dylan Muggleston will also go to three. Ben Cooper will go to three. Yeah, well, um, looks like we might have to get... Uh, Rocco Ludoff starting the centre forward today. <laughs> Get his goal tally up. This, I believe, is that last goal. Just having another look at Ben Cooper's flick. Yeah, really good there. Yeah, good I, areas. I see no reason why they wouldn't go straight to him again. He's lined up off the left bracket. So what do you do, Stu? You go straight down the same avenue or you try and trick I the goalkeeper into something else? If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Flick it in the same spot. Oh, 
Oh, it's stuck there in between the goalkeeper's foot and pad. Yeah, forced into a little bit of a change there. The trap just untidy. Picked it up on the resi, but uh, hey, high quality to get it on target, on the ground, and create another penalty corner now. Oh, he's gone for it. He went in the exact same spot, yeah. exact same channel. You could see there, John Casey just a little more upright in his stance, a little bit more centered, able to look after that one. So what do you reckon, Stu? Third time the charm. Hook one late. Shape up, attacking right, and just try and yeah. hook it back. Speaking of hook it back, here it comes. Oh, we could be seeing some uh, pocket reaching here from the umpire. Yeah, and I am not surprised by that. No, it uh, seems like a bit of shock from the crowd in front of us, but I think there's nothing else. It could have been uh, Sam Hewitt says the same. Look, we had no other option there. Yeah, the replay on this. yeah, there's no question about this. The only question is which colour is it going to be and for how long. And I think a yellow card is a pretty fair uh, reflection of that challenge. Yeah, and a lot of people will say, oh, but he got the ball. Yeah, cool, before you collected the player and put him in a pretty dangerous position. Um, you're taking out legs like that and you're off your, your own feet. Uh, you can collect the ball all you like, but you can't also take the player. Yeah, I've definitely said that myself when making a couple of tackles. <laughs> yeah. but it's, uh, it's no good kicking a dude in the head and then touching the <laughs> hockey ball saying, no, nah, clean as, clean as. You've got to be a bit smarter than that. Late switch, Schwass. Great running. I want to say it was Caleb Williamson potentially back there doing the running. It was. Yep. And out they come quickly here at the multi side. Here is Williamson. They've got numbers to the left if he can get it under control. Oh, he's just got isolated. Good defense, but they still have still a chance here. for a good circle entry. Keep it on your stick. Great defense there. Good clean up in the end. Looks like James Hornsby out there. Guest player for the Asian side. And back they come down the other way. We're off to the races. And in towards the middle. It's all on now. Akira Gardner. TJ Hudanui frying pancakes on that one. 40 goes now. We'll have to catch our breath in a couple of moments, but not just yet. Caleb Williamson, he's around the last one. Oh, he's hit the woodwork. Oh, he's hit the post. Caleb Williamson. Oh, my goodness. Well, that is some uh, exciting hockey. I think we've seen... Three chances in the in a matter of seconds. This last one flashing off the post. He's hit it square on. Uh, yeah, I've, uh, I'm going to have to get a bottle of water up here ASAP. It's, uh, I'm out of breath. That was just three end-to-ends. Penalty cornered one way. We went uh, that yellow card, of course, we saw. Holy, here he is again, Schwass. Got to be. Oh, <laughs> They've done us dirty on the camera, but oh. me, oh my. Falling off seats here, Stu. I can't believe that one. That's oh. gone across the goal from the near side. No goalkeeper in it. No defender there. Holy. This uh, well, this game has just gone six to midnight. And yep. in, a, in a matter of moments, there's another goal scoring opportunity here. It's going to be cleaned up in the end. Um, but both teams have decided that uh, defence is not the way to play this game. Nah. We're going to go forward in a million miles an hour, and uh, we're going to make this exciting as hell. This is it. This is what we're here for. This is Heritage Hockey in a nutshell. Who cares about defensive structures? Who cares about having 11 players on the field? Doesn't matter. We're here to rip nets and write checks. Holy, here comes Dill Muggleston. Really good ball carry on the baseline. Oh, oh and we're just uh, we're allergic to uh, putting I the ball in the goal at the moment. Um, something about this blue turf. I don't I don't know what it is. Stu, you, you asked me a question yesterday uh, after the last game. Uh, I think I remember you saying, "How do you convince strikers to score goals?" I don't know, but whatever's happening out here at the moment is not it. <laughs> There's been two now for this Asian side that oh, I'm not sure you could gift wrap with any more layers. That was past the parcel there, two in a row for the Asian team. Man, they'll be gutted with that. Yeah, the, the scoreboard keeper was already already clicking the buttons oh. to add the uh, the goals on the scoreboard. Yep. And then he just uh, 
Had to put his hands back in his pocket, but he might still be needed oh. here. <laughs> <laughs> Don't. Oh, we're up in arms here in the commentary booth. Breathe. Breathe, gentlemen. Breathe. Wow, we. All I know is Sam Hewitt and Dave Hayes down there have pulled their hair out. I've never seen so many. Oh, I bet Sammy's down there going, oh, I would have scored that. <laughs> Chalk me down for three. Get me out there, coach. Sam Hewitt and the Asian team, man, they're creating something, and that's what will please them the most. They're creating those opportunities. They're right there. Remember, they are going against 10 players with uh, Parnap Hawk with the yellow card, but I oh, just love them to see, one put one, see them put one in the goal and continue to build here in this third quarter. Yeah, well, they've definitely made the most of this player advantage, and you can see even a three-goal lead here, if the finishing was a little bit sharper, Another chance. There's this one. Time. There's one. Good. It's taken the Red Dragon, Dylan Muggleston. He's done it. Look at him. He's sick of what he's been seeing for the last three <laughs> minutes. Boys, if someone's not going to do it, I'm going to come up the front and do it myself. He's, he's seen enough strikers putting it far, past the far post. He's going to yep. get in there and do it himself. And before he uh, rudely interrupted me with his goal scoring, <laughs> um, I was just going to mention that a three-goal lead could evaporate very quickly with the match we're seeing here, and it's already been cut to two. Well, that's it. If, if you'd converted... I uh, know it's, it's easy to say you convert all of those opportunities, but you wouldn't have had them if you'd come back the halfway. Yeah, and all yeah, yeah. But you convert one and then that one, and yeah. we're here at 4-3 going into the fourth. It's a whole different game, and could there still be 4-3 oh, going into the fourth? <laughs> the librarian had already given him the book. He'd read it twice. Yeah, that was yesterday's news. Yeah, Lloyd just fed straight onto the forehand there of Te Oranga Hohepa. Little enterprise there from Bubby, just trying to throw a little specky in in the last 20 seconds. Oh, wow, this... Uh, Stu, if we've got 17 more minutes of this, I'm still not even sure that your team's safe yet into tomorrow's final. This could go either way, yeah. No, no, it was looking, uh, I was looking pretty comfortable uh, for the Fiji boys to book our ticket to the final, but after that quarter, I would not be putting my money on anything. Yeah, I've just yelled out to Chad there, put away the carver bowls, boys, we're not, we're not set yet. There's still a game out here, and uh, look, if this Asian side have anything to do with it, or at least someone that can get one over the line, we're all on here and uh, into the third quarter, 4-2, the junior Māori side still do have the two-goal lead, but man, it's a lot uh, less comfortable than the three-goal they started with. Yeah, I don't know if we've got enough time at quarter time to show all the highlights, but we'll <laughs> show you as many as we can. Excellent flick from Ben Cooper there, slotting at home. Yeah, this one. Oh, look at it. You can hear the pain and the thing off the post. Yeah, the umpires might have to readjust it. It's probably shifted off the uh, line after yep. that connection. This was the first of a myriad of chances for the Asian men. Yep. That one just slipping past the right post. You're right, a myriad. There was a few of them that went across the goal. This another one. Just picks up the foot there in front of goal. And finally... Red Dragon got himself one. One of the prettiest. <laughs> but he got there in the end. And we see Harley Cooper and Solomon Kai here just uh, trying to figure out well, what on earth just happened there for the last six minutes of that quarter. Um, the rest of the team there, Jordan Edmonds handing out the uh, the lollies. They'll be well needed if they're to keep up with this Asian side for the last 17 minutes. Coach Dave Hayes uh, looking good as ever. But uh, we mentioned it, or I mentioned it in that third quarter. There could be a period here, if this Asian team can keep up the pace, where the Māori team could struggle to stay with them. Um, it's going to be tired legs. They've had to play with 10 players for now 10 minutes. They've had two yellow cards. Is it going to take its toll here, and, and could it prove deadly? Yeah, I think that's that's got to be the first message to the... Um Junior Maldives team from their coaches that hey let's let's keep 11 on the field because we've seen what happens when we don't have all 11 of them um, and it can get pretty dicey so first things first discipline good then it's about control if they can get a chance going forward we know they will take it but they've got to be able to look after the ball and that is not the way to do it as Lloyd McLaughlin no. pinches Keelan Stafford very nearly Solomon Kai here doing his best uh, road workers impression there with the hand up 
just probably ran out of, of angle more than anything Lloyd would have liked to see him kind of pull it onto his forehand if he could um, that yellow card to Parnapa Hawk came in the 45th minute so he should be back now if it was just five minutes we're not 100 percent sure on the length of it we'll try and get a update on that yeah. meanwhile we have a pretty quick break through the middle of the field does he have any support and he's been called for over protecting the ball with his body Interesting, Stuart, we're on a different angle to it than the ref, but from this angle, it looked like there was actually a fair bit of space between he and the defender. Probably looked closer from that opposite side uh, where the ref was, but I actually think the defender had given up trying to stay hip to hip and had beelined for the top of the circle. Uh, so perhaps a little hard done by there, Caleb Williamson, but uh, we can confirm this junior Maldi side are back to the full complement of players. So they're back to 11. What they are also back to, though, is back to their own goal for defensive penalty corner training. And uh, Dylan Muggleston, well, he scored a field goal. And he's ready now at the penalty corner bracket. We'll see this replay. Yeah, just unnecessary. Probably didn't even need to really try and challenge the ball there if he just kept his feet moving. I assume the Asian player would have run out of space on the baseline anyway. Uh, so just a little bit ill-discipline. Excellent save. Second shot, though. It goes wide. A nice save there by Kai here in goal. Yeah, he's, he's got a big right boot to it. And yep. he's cleared it halfway out. Muggleston almost picked up his own rebound and gave himself a second chance at it, but it was cleared up in the end. Yeah, I think it was Red Dragon v Red Warrior there. Um, man. Showing some real skill there. Akira Gardner, Ben Schwass, it grows across. It's got to be. And penalty corner awarded there. I don't know. I can't remember the rules about Easter Saturday, Easter Sunday, but the shops must be closed because these strikers can't buy one at the moment. This is tough here. Look at the scramble. Goalkeeper does a good job. A little bit of a cheeky cover with the glove, yep. but he's he's doing enough to leave the ball a little bit available, leave it a bit questionable. And can Muggleston get them one closer here? Great running. Caleb Williamson, man, he's really stood up this game. <laughs> the little upright, or the little reverse shovel was the attempt. Can they go quickly here at the junior multi side? Great ball. Cooper has just overrun it. Yeah, he's almost trapped it too well, Ben Cooper. He's trapped it dead and yeah. then overrun it. He probably wanted to move it with his first touch, which would have been tough, but they've still got a chance in the circle right in front, cleaned up. Penalty corner given away. I know I've, I've sung his praise, and I know he scored that um, ripper of a goal earlier, Caleb Williamson, but that's two times now where he's been the first runner on the penalty corner, run it down, and has got ahead of the next two outlet passes and received it up on the attacking 25 in their breakout. If that isn't pure effort, uh, I don't know what else is. That's a uh, really good ticker shown there by, by Williamson. Yeah, driven by passion, that young man, and it, it gets him across the park, but it's quite often the work off the wall that doesn't get seen. So it's yep. cool of you to highlight that. It's not just the banging the goals and eliminating mm. guys. It's putting in the work for your teammates when it's needed. Big one here for both sides. Tristan Walker gets denied by John Casey. And now Hohepa, he's got a few players to get through. Walker is in the circle. Long corner, the call there for the Maldi team. Now onto the ball here. Looks like Tyler Kennedy. Now I have another long corner coming. And Norpeta Hohepa on the ball. 
They hold the two goal advantage. Great receive. Keelan Stafford in the circle. Across it goes. Not quite cleared yet. Lovely skill. Still there, Caleb Williamson. Interestingly, I wouldn't like that option, but for everything that was on the inside, I think he took the right one. Have a look at this replay here. Bubby gets one in quick and shoots it. Look at the two players on his inside shoulder. I actually yeah, think that's the right move. Yeah, to be fair, rolling onto his uh, forehand there was not an option, so sometimes have a dig. Yeah, yeah. And look, it's one of those ones where it's either going to hit the goalkeeper hard, miss the goal like it did, or the goalie's not going to see it and it's going to make two sounds. Doo -doo. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Not often do I encourage strikers to roll onto the resi that close to the baseline, but if you'd seen the positioning of those two defenders, you had to. And uh, not mad at it. And here, another opportunity with Hohepa still going. Cleaned up at least to the sideline by Quinton Smith. Under a bit of pressure here, this Asian side. They want to play hockey at the other end as much as possible. Yeah, this will be exactly what the junior Māori team will be looking for. Kind of just sucking some time out of the game, playing it down at the right end, having a bit of attacking possession, and possibly creating some chances. Oh, there he is. There's the skill. In the wind up, I think it was Ben Cooper trying to sniff away his third there. Keelan Stafford again yeah. doing a good job cleaning up some scraps in the middle of the field. Williamson, man, he gets going so quick. Never, uh, never gives up, never stops. He's another one who's really. Uh, Really put his name up in lights this weekend. He's played a couple of Heritage tournaments now. Uh, I think originally he started uh, playing for the Heritage Barbarians three years ago, if I remember correctly. I wasn't involved in the senior Māori side that year. And now two trips with the junior team. Cut out here. Lord Peter Hohe, but this is... Bit of space on this left side if they can use the two on ones correctly. It's going to fall. Yeah, just got caught. It was all shifting right to left, Stu, and I just wanted somebody to pop up against the grain, yeah. probably top of the circle type of an area um, to throw a left foot pass at. But yeah, not quite coming for them, just a little untidy. Unfortunate for the multi team there. Still 4-2, halfway through this fourth quarter. Uh, this Asian team, Stu, uh, sooner or later it's going to have to go. And uh, they've got a long way to get to remembering a penalty shootout's not enough for them. They have to win outright, so two goals not enough. They'll need all three of them. Yeah, wondering when or if Sammy Hewitt uh, might look to pull the goalkeeper, give himself an extra field player. We've already seen some success with the extra field player for this team. They're going to have another chance from the baseline here. But it rolls onto a foot. Yeah, if I was Sammy Hewitt, I'd be asking John Casey if he can score goals at the other end. Yeah, perhaps. Get up get there and kick them in. Yeah. Give us something up there. Here comes Easton. Easton on the ball for the Asian side. And off goes Tioranga Hohepa. He's not got a whole lot of support, but they do have a 3v3 if they can work something from it. But the ball... Yeah, they just uh, weren't able to get numbers in the picture there. Tioranga tried to just drop it off and create a bit more time, but not there for them. And here comes Dylan Muggleston. There you go, searching... Good defence there, Geordie Thomas. And does well there to try and beat the box. Oh, great 
control. Yeah, really solid there. Protecting the ball, getting his eyes up, finding a simple pass. That's some pressure now, Hawk. Not only from the player, but from the sideline. Tioranga <laughs> Hohepa, calm as ever, steps off it. Yeah, I'm I'm very impressed by these Hohepa brothers. They are, I think, all of what, 19? Yeah, well, I think 18. Bubby's uh, 18 at best, and yeah. Norpeta might be 20 now, um, but yeah. Yeah, but the way they play is is of a, you know, a highly experienced, patient, controlled hockey player. They, um, yeah, they've got experience and poise and composure just far above their years. They never seem to be in any trouble or any panic. They make good decisions on the ball. They've got really good control, and they've really marshaled their team from the middle of the uh, park this weekend. It's cool to see from such young, promising young players. Yeah, and it's um, it's really good to see them play together. You know, I've spoken at length uh, with the mum about they're so good when they can play together. Yeah. And we don't actually get to see it at Māori tournament. Uh, Norpeta plays for Waikato Maniopoto and um, Tioranga been playing for Waiariki, so we, we see them actually match up head to head. Uh, so seeing them together this weekend and being able to just play together, stick them in the midfield together and let them play. Um, there's times where you don't even know if they've seen each other, but all of a sudden the pass goes. Yeah, they know where each other are. Yeah, yeah they've been good again. Uh, yeah, we can confirm 17 and 19, the two boys. So uh, both playing their club hockey up here. Norps is uh, at Somerville, I think, and uh, Tioranga with Takapuna. So after a pretty frantic third quarter, the Māori junior team have just managed to almost deliberately suck a bit of the life out of this game, slow it down, hold some possession, and uh, we might uh, bring some of the life back into it now yep. <laughs> as the applause ring out from the uh, junior Māori fans after that uh, We'll call it uh, Agricultural Challenge. Yeah, his name's Robbie Williams, and he's living up to it there, giving us a show, just as we thought everyone had sat down <laughs> in their seats. We're back up again. Let me entertain you, he says. I love the look to the umpire when you know you're 100% <laughs> guilty, but you're still going to plead your case. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he loves a tryout. And uh, now, a oh, bit of an opportunity here. Keep an eye. The setup here is slightly different. They've only got one bracket, and they do have someone sitting on the 25. Oh, he's come way early, and he knows too. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Turns around, throws his glove. He's already halfway there. Uh, this is now going to make it real interesting for both teams here. Yeah, that's the old, I don't actually want to be first no. runner trick. You no. just uh, break early and go, oh, too bad, got to go to halfway. Whoa. Oh, Specky, love that. It was Tyler Kennedy flicking, or potentially even Jordy Thomas. I'll have to see the replay. Excuse yeah, me. it is Tyler Kennedy. Jordy Thomas flick, uh, trapping. Yeah, excellent right glove save from the Great Wall. John Casey equal to that one. And they go downtown. Ryan Shoe, play the miss, young fella. <laughs> play the miss. You're down two, you need three. Play the miss. Yeah, the vertical limitations there might have uh, <laughs> yeah. done him a little bit. Yeah, might have got up on him, you reckon? <laughs> and last uh, two minutes now of this men's matchup. It's the first men's game of the day, the 12 o'clock game here between New Zealand Junior Māori team. Made up primarily of the under-21 boys. Taking on the new outfit at Heritage Chockey, the New Zealand Asian men. And perhaps one more crack for Caleb Williamson. And now I'll try and come the other side. Bit of a scramble. It's going to fall there for Jordy Thomas. Tyler Kennedy has it in the circle. Kennedy, 3D. Whoa. I thought he perhaps had that 
under a decent amount of control, but judged to have just lifted a little bit high. Yeah, I think it, where it hit, Dil Muggleson, who's done a really good job there defensively, just get in the way of it, make it hit your legs, yeah. make it hit you high enough up the body to call danger. Because it wasn't dangerous on the carry, but Dil's just stepped in and said, well, here it hits me. Yeah. Out we go. And, uh, final minute now. Do either of these teams have a last little bit of fireworks in them, Stu? The third quarter was well, probably more than enough for a game's worth. Yeah, yeah. I'm uh, reasonably glad to uh, catch my breath, actually, after <laughs> yeah. that. But the uh, fourth quarter in particular has been a good show of just control from this junior multi side. Perhaps not their strongest suit. They want to be creative and aggressive and go forward quickly, but they've really just controlled the game. And to be honest, in the fourth quarter, not... Oh, as we have a scramble in front Ooh, of goal. Scramble, all right. They've, um, yeah, they've controlled things and not really let the Asians have a go at it. No. Nah. No, nah, I've been uh, impressed with some of the maturity uh, that this New Zealand Junior Māori team have played with in parts. Uh, really impressive. They've built through the weekend. And uh, interestingly enough, as we count down these final seconds, Stu, what it does mean, you're through... The NZ Fiji boys will go through to the final. These two teams out here in front of us, the Junior Māori side and the New Zealand Asians, well, they're going to play again tomorrow. And uh, I'm going to go and talk to the, the coaches at some point, but if we can just run that third quarter over and over again, uh, I'll be pretty keen on watching that for, for 70 minutes. And, uh, yeah, what an epic game out here between these two sides. Big win from the New Zealand Junior Māori boys. They needed that one. Um, after a couple of, of tough losses that they've taken this weekend. Stu, how did you see that one? And uh, what did you think of the, the Māori win? Yeah, I think they, obviously, once they got the goals on the, uh, on the scoreboard, it was, um, it was pretty well done from there. That third quarter, the Asians had their chances. Um, that would be the, you know, the kind of the quarter they're rowing. They created them. They couldn't finish them. They would have been in a great spot if they could have. Um, but that's what happens, and that's the way the cookie crumbles. But uh, after that third quarter in particular, I'd say tomorrow's match, which will be a repeat of this, is, is must-see TV because that was some of the most exciting hockey of the weekend. Oh, that, that third quarter, had there just been that touch of icing on it, could have been replayed over and over and over. Never mind the highlights, just play the third quarter. Yeah. Because that thing was unreal, end-to-end. -end. Like I said, if we'd just been able to take a couple of goals out of it, um, this game could look very different. We could have easily have been going into the fourth quarter at four all. Yeah. Uh, and uh, that's testament to this Asian side. They've been building, they're creating the opportunities. They've just come together. It's the first time they've ever played as a team. Third game in here, new to the tournament. It's exciting things for them moving forward. Yeah, definitely. Like you said, they're, they're new to this. This will be the first time their group has ever been together. Um, and things only build from there. So definitely nothing to be ashamed of in the effort they've put out there and uh, they get another chance at it tomorrow. Yeah, absolutely. This one's going to be an absolute bell ringer tomorrow. I'm looking forward to it um, already. But what I'm also looking forward to is uh, you guys game a little bit later on in the day. You'll be taking on the Indian boys who have looked next to unstoppable. Uh, they've quite easily played the best hockey of the tournament so far. Stu, I'll ask you quickly while we go through these bits of highlights, how do you stop the Indians? Uh, perhaps building a brick wall in uh, front of the goal uh, would be helpful. Um, they've got a couple of key players, but all their guys are really skillful. Um, this afternoon's one will be a bit of a fun one. Uh, the end result not uh, necessarily mattering too much, but both teams always go out there trying to put their best product on the field. So look for some interesting tactics or players to have a bit of a go this afternoon. It should hopefully be an exciting game. Yeah, and we see some of these highlights were from that crazy third quarter. This one, I think, later in the fourth, very nearly an extra for Caleb Williamson. We saw the one-up flick and save there by John Casey. Uh, but in the end, it was the Maldi side who were able to put their opportunities away, defend when they needed to, uh, and they held on, and they did enough this time uh, to get the win, their first win of the tournament. Uh, looks like Harley is down turf side with, uh, with Norpeter there. He's caught his breath after yelling at them for the last little bit. Down to you, Harley. Well, I was mistaken there. Harley uh, has lost his voice. Too much yelling. Uh, testing, too much yelling. testing, test one, two. And we'll throw back down to Harley. Harley, how are you going? Hey, and we're back. 
with Norps. Hey, Norps, the winning captain of the New Zealand Māori Junior Team against the New Zealand Asian Team, 4-2. Um, it was a pretty great game out there, backwards and forwards. Quite festival hockey. Uh, what was your um, expectation going into today's game? Mm. Um, <laughs> okay, obviously, you know, we're going to have to put subtitles on for that one. But um, it was also a really good game. You guys played really well. What were you expecting going into the Asian team, knowing the, what we knew about them going in, and then obviously what we knew what we could do? Were we expecting a higher score than that? Um, kind of, just a little bit. Um, they were actually a really strong side. I didn't expect them to be that strong, to be honest. But, um, yeah, I don't know. They were quite strong and very skillful. Just, we probably could have just hit hold the ball a bit more because it was a bit scrappy in the end, or throughout the whole game. So we could have held the ball a bit more. And going forward, obviously, we've got the third, fourth playoff tomorrow. Um, doesn't really matter who we play, obviously we're going to be prepared. Yeah. But I heard that you guys did something really cool in the uh, the changing rooms before we uh, started. Oh, yeah. Do you reckon that was sort of probably motivation for you guys for the win today? Yeah, yeah, kind of, because like um, at the start of the tournament we just like, we're in our own buzz, we were pretty low at the start. And then we just went into the dugout, had a little huddle and then a little bit of a laugh and then bring the base closer a bit. Yeah, it's quite good. And uh, obviously, uh, congratulations, well done and uh, looking forward to the rest of the tournament. Yeah, yeah, thank, thank you very thank much. You. That, of course, was Harley Cooper down there, sideline with Norpeta Hohepa. Uh, awesome win and famous victory there for the New Zealand Junior Māori side. Coming up after this one, we will have the New Zealand Heritage Barbarian Ladies taking on the New Zealand Indian Sports Women, which uh, serves as a pretty straight-up semi-final. Either team winning it will go through to tomorrow's gold medal match to take on the junior multi side who we saw earlier this morning. That game's coming up at 2 o'clock. Uh, make sure you join us along. Thank you all for those that have uh, followed along so far. We'll be back just before 2 p.m. for the next women's game. See you then.